Welcome. This video is going to walk you through how to create an inventory value report. We're going to try in this uh, collection of videos to give examples of reports that people are regularly searching for. So I'm going to start by going into my inventory management screens, D, and then really quickly, if I go into D3, my inventory screens, and I hit shift question mark three times, or I hit the yellow help button, it's going to give me my three character identifiers for each of my fields. This may be the easiest way for you to see this on the screen and know which fields that you want to use when you're creating a report or when you're using filters um, to filter the information that you're seeing. I'm going to go into D4 to create my report type in my clerk code. Now, the first thing it's going to ask me is my selection options, like what parts I actually want to look at. We have a video in this collection that teaches you how to use our report generator screens. So I'm going to pass over most of this information. But one thing that I do want to use as a filter in my inventory value, if I wanted to run this in detail, meaning I wanted to see every single part in my inventory that actually has a positive quantity on hand, I definitely don't want 10,000 pieces of paper to print out because I'm looking at every single part that actually exists in my inventory. So I'm going to use my compare options to say I only want to look at parts where my quantity on hand, my field is QH1, is greater than the value of zero. Now, if I was back here and I didn't know what my operation options were, I can always click on the drop down menu and it'll tell me what my options are. So I'm going to say that I want to see anybody whose quantity on hand is greater than zero. And then I'm going to hit my home key to get to my main screen. So quickly, my report options, my uh, report name is invent oops, inventory value. And I'm going to do this one in detail. My print options, I'm going to print it to the screen so we can see it here, but you can always email it to someone. You can always save it as a file or you can run it to paper if you really wanted to. The one thing I wanted to bring to your attention for this particular report is the format. I can print it in detail, which shows every single part in my inventory. I can do it as a grand total, which means just a single line item of information that gives me a value. Or I can do it in total, which gives me a total per line code. So I'm going to go to detail and I'm going to set up my screen. I want to see manufacturer, part number, quantity on hand, oops, quantity on hand, cost, and my description. And remember, if you need to add more fields and you're running out of space, you can change the numbers in the column area to kind of condense the uh, amount of space that some of these fields are taking up, especially if there's blanks in a lot of the fields. I'm going to press the home key to return. And last thing I'm going to do is my calculation options. So I'm going to click here. Because I'm running an inventory value report, I obviously want some totals. So I'm going to extend quantity on hand by cost. That's going to multiply those two, put a column on my far right, and then a total at the bottom. Because I've said I'm only looking at parts where quantity on hand is greater than zero, I don't need to answer this question. But this question is basically stating, if you end up with a negative value, so you had a negative quantity on hand and you multiplied it by cost, so I got a negative inventory value for a part, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to actually leave it negative and subtract from your total? Do you want to leave it positive, which is sometimes the answer, or do you just want to ignore it? Um, since I have nothing showing up, it doesn't even matter what I answer here, um, but that's that sometimes will skew your value, so watch out for that. I'm going to hit the home key and then I want to save this. So I'm going to F10 to save parameters. I'm going to call it INVD, inventory value detail. Remember, you can set up security or passwords if you'd like. And I'm going to hit the enter key and it's going to start to run my uh, report for me. Manufacturer part number, quantity on hand, cost description, and then that extended value on the right. Now, one of the cool buttons that we have here is the last button. In the case that you ran it to detail and then realized that you didn't want to do that, you just need the total value, instead of having to go and run the whole report over again, especially if you didn't save it, you can hit that F6 key and it will take you to the very bottom of the screen. Now it is still calculating everything here, so you may want to walk away for a minute and then come back to get your value. I am going to uh, kill this, so I control C 
and that will cancel that job uh, so I can run it again just in total or in that grand total. I'm going to hit my escape key, go back into my custom report, and notice now I have a line item inventory value in detail. I'm going to bring this up, hit my home key, and then go to my print options, and I'm going to change the report format to total. I'm going to hit my home key and hit the enter key to run this. Now I'm not saving it, I'm simply running it. And you'll notice that it's giving me now my inventory value as a total per vendor or total per line code that I have in my system, depending on how you have your uh, vendors and or your suppliers and manufacturers set up in the system. Again, there's that F6 key if you want to jump to the bottom. I'm going to control C this or escape to get back out. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a grand total uh, of this report. So let's go into the inventory value. It always brings me into the selection options because this is the screen that I'm most likely to change, whether I want to see just a certain line in my inventory um, or ask for different uh, compare options. I'm going to press the home key and I'm going to click on my print options and I'm going to change this to grand total. So at this point, all I'm asking the system to give me is a single line of what my inventory value is. I'm going to press the home to return key and then I'm going to change my report options name total. Oops, excuse me. Now I'm going to hit the F10 to save parameters, but instead of saving it over this INVD report, I'm going to change this to a T. And that immediately goes through and it saves it as a new job instead of the old one. So instead of me having to start fresh, I used a save as function. I made the changes that I wanted to make, and then once I press the enter key, now I have two jobs that are in my system, the detail, uh, INVD, and the total, INVT as in Tom. So I'm going to hit the enter key here. Now keep in mind it's still calculating this value, so it is going to take a minute to run, but I'm going to uh, wait for my line of information to pop up on the screen, and that'll give me my grand inventory total without bothering to show me my manufacturer codes themselves or each part itself. So you'll notice that it displayed my single line of information, uh, my $722,000. That's my inventory value amount on the right-hand side. One thing to note, the $23,000 that you see in the center of the screen does not represent the number of pieces that make up that $722,000. It also does not represent the number of pieces that I have in my inventory completely. That is the number of line items of information that were checked or that were reviewed to make up that $722,000. So those are the number of SKUs that had a quantity on hand that was greater than zero. So that number, you don't want to hand that to an accountant and tell them that's the number of pieces that make up that $722,000. That's not the case. We can always add a column in this report that gives you the to total number of pieces in your inventory if that's uh, something that would interest you. Now I'm going to hit the escape key. Um, and then you will notice that uh, if I go back into my inventory custom reports, I now have those two jobs, inventory value in detail and inventory value in total, both of which can be scheduled or can be run uh, whenever anybody wants to run it. Again, you can email it to someone, you can save it as a file, or you can print it to paper. One thing I did want to mention, if you do not have a spooler, and if you did have one, you would probably know it, but if you don't have a spooler, it's our menu selection YC1, you may want to get, that, get one. Um, it's easy for us to set up. Now, the reason that I'm suggesting this, especially for an inventory value report, is because we cannot go back and give you an inventory value as of a previous date. So if you ran an inventory value as of the end of 2016 and you lost that piece of paper and you need it again, the only way for us to get that back is to either go to a backup or if you emailed it to someone, go and get it. If you saved it in a file, go and get it. If it was just printed to a piece of paper and that paper has been lost, if you printed it to the spooler or if you have a spooler, the document goes past the spooler first before it gets to the printer and takes a snapshot. So we can retrieve that information months and years later if we need to retrieve it. So if you don't have a spooler, please call us and have us set one up for you.
If you have any questions on any of this, please call us at 800-829-4722 or send us an email at sbctraining at autolog.com. Thank you so much.